All right. We are here with Johnny D from Spanish Fly. Thanks What's for being on, here, man? man. No, thank you for inviting me, brother. Always. Appreciate you uh, pulling up, man. Yeah, hell yeah. So we're going to start from the beginning. Let's go. Where are you originally from, man? Wilmington, California. That's uh, in between Long Beach and San Pedro and Carson. The Harbor area. You know what I'm saying? So. And how long did, uh, have you lived there? My whole life. I grew up there. I was born in UCLA Medical in Torrance and just living with me my whole life, dog. That's, that's my neighborhood. And how would you describe your upbringing? My upbringing was, it was good, man. Um, I had both parents. I still had both parents in my life. I grew up on the, on the east side of town. It's my neighborhood right there. And it's just been, just been solid, bro. Like, grew up in the time where you can, you can go outside and play. You know what I'm saying? So it was, it was um, I was a, what a, I would say, eight, no, 80s, 90s baby. So I seen, I seen, I seen it all, bro. Those were the good years, man. 80s and 90s, like you said, uh, where kids can be kids. Yeah. Because nowadays it's all social media. Kids can't even go outside anymore. So much going on. Yeah, you got to be careful, huh? You have to. Kids man. get snatched up. You can't, you know, you can't, you can't play like you used to. So now they just play the internet. All kinds of crazy mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, and that's, a, that's the last resort. It's all they can do right now. Unfortunately, you know what I mean? Yeah. But when we were growing up, it was fun. We could, we could actually go outside and socialize with people and have a good time. Go venture, go and catch things, catch, you know, let, just, just go out there and play, bro, like freely. Yeah. Come back, you know, there was no cell phones or nothing. You'll come back at a time. Your parents would just know, you tell them you're gone and you'll come back at your time. Yeah. Without being abducted. You know, <laughs> no like supervision, that. no nothing. Yeah, yeah just brother. go out and play and come yeah, back. Yeah, like, ride like your nothing. bike. No, the only time you come back early is if you get a flat tire, brother. Right <laughs> on your bike, and you changing your off off to your day. Real talk, man. So, uh, what was your relationship like with your parents? Solid, man. Um, my um, my mom and dad, they're workers, hard workers. So I come from a hardworking family. Uh, pops was doing construction, so he was back and forth. You know, he had he had a good job, and then he had. Time off, then a good job. My mom worked for a supermarket and just hustled her whole time. So they were they were they were solid. They were both two hardworking people, so they got it, they got it done. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, um, we had we had we had we had everything. You know what I'm saying? Not not every single thing, but we had everything, and we're ghetto ghetto rich. You know what I'm saying? Not rich, not middle class, but ghetto rich. Ghetto fabulous. Ghetto fabulous. Yeah. If you want to call it. Yeah. So it was good. I think a lot of people were back and back in those days. I think we were all ghetto fabulous at some time, right? Because uh, let, uh, let's face it, man, uh, the areas that we were growing up in, they weren't rich areas. They were, no. they were poor areas, you know? But, but the thing about, you, know, you got to give it up to your parents. For a lot of parents back then, they made it happen. Yeah. They made it happen yep. on Christmas, Thanksgiving, and 365 days a year. Yep. You have your ups and downs, bro, but... As long as you continue to, to build and go higher, that's, that's what it is. That's what I'm about. Real talk. You know what I'm saying? So what was the harbor area like when you were growing up, man? Fuck, gang of faster, bro. I grew up in a time where, where um, middle school was rough, and then going to high school, it was like just gang infested. It was real, real, <coughs> real active. And um, damn, it was my first, my first day in school, I got in a fight, bro. My first day of high school, I got into a, I got cheap shot while I was looking for my classes, bro. So it was, it was, uh, I would say it was a rough, rough scenario and, and Banning was gang infested like crazy. We had, uh, we had, uh, people from, we had uh, people from Carson um, pulling up with a lot of Samoans, with a lot of, uh, a lot of blacks too, which is rare because Wilmington don't have that many black, um, black people in it, but they were busting. So there's people like you had like, you had different neighborhoods from different, from like other areas, LA areas, they were busting. So it was, it was crazy, but it was, um. Major, major like Wilmington, the east and the west side and some north siders, but that's what it was. It was pretty, pretty active in there. My high school years were active, bro. You know what I'm saying? So we had to, so I had, to had to be on a, keep my what, head on a swivel? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Head on so, a yeah. swivel, P's, on key, P's and Q's. Yeah, my, fir my first two years were, were rough. Yeah. And then after that, I got, had it cracking. I had it down. So it was like hand over fist, bro, just putting in, putting in work. What other experiences did you have in high school, man? What other beefs did you school? get into? Just, just regular shit, catching fades and fighting and getting in trouble and getting in trouble to a point where, where my mom said it's better for her to go and actually 
be at the front door helping, like just like helping out, like working for the school, but not working like free work volunteer to make sure that, work, to, yeah, yeah, volunteer work to make sure that I wasn't really messing up. But, um, besides that dog, it was, it was, um, it was pretty solid, but, but I, I would, um, I would say growing up, like I caught a, I caught a case when I was in high school, which, which put me on a, like on a path to like do like sports and stuff. Cause I was, I was like, I would say like, I was, a like a hood legend, like on football, you know, like streets, playing in the streets, doing turkey bowls and playing like, and just, I was killing it. So I got a, I caught a little uh, gun charge. And when I caught that gun charge, um, like the whole, you know, like, you know, everybody knows everybody in a small neighborhood. Wilmington is real small, but it's, it's really active. A lot of strong people there. So everybody knows everybody. So when I caught that, when I caught that gun charge, I had to do community service. I had to do, um, um, I had to do, uh, what is it? I had to do um, counseling and um, pay fines and shit like that. So when I caught that, my, my pops knew the person that, that worked at the counseling place. My pops knew the person that I was going to do community service with. So they told me, hey, man, if you just play, you play high school football, we'll just, we'll sign it off. You know what I'm saying? We'll, we'll clear you of that, but you got to play. So, so I was playing, I played, high, I played uh, football at Banning. But you know what? I just did it just to do it. I didn't really um, use my ability. So, so I just went with the trend, bro, because I just went with it, which I regret because I was really good. And I did pretty well, but I could have did way better. But I just didn't get used to it. So it was, it was, it was, it was kind of crazy. It what position crazy. did you play in football? I was a wide receiver, cornerback. All right. A big boy now, but I was, I was, I was nice and slim down that back in those days. All right, right. You know what I'm saying? You had a skill set then. You were you? Yeah, were I was you solid. Good? Yeah, I was solid. All right. Yeah. So, but but I didn't take it seriously. You know, like when you when you go in there, when you're going in there just uh, to avoid doing what you're you know what you're supposed to do when you when you make a mistake. So you're just like I'm here day to day, just going through the motions. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. But that was that was an experience. That was crazy. So what type of music were you listening to back in the day? Back in the days, I grew up in that uh, that death row era. So I was like, I, was, I say that I grew up around Snoop. I grew up around, um, you know, all the, the all Tupac, everybody. And then I listened to a lot of uh, Master P, Ghetto Dope and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? And then Make Up Say Uh and all that shit. And then I grew up on um, Spice One. You have your two shorts. So it was like. It was popping, but my favorite artist was like Spice One. I would say that because his shit was like the way he made his songs. He he talked about a whole like from um, drugs and everything and mix it into a song. Like he was he was storyteller. Dope. Yeah, he was yeah. a sick storyteller. Welcome Who's to the art. ghetto. Yeah, welcome to the ghetto. Yeah, I mean that he used to do that. Uh, I once knew it, you know, like in the weed. You he mixes it all the way through, dog. Like he was hard, dog. He still is. So yeah, so I'll, I'll be working with him pretty soon. So we'll get that cracking. That's what's up. So how do you feel with, with rappers today versus rappers back then? You got, you know, you got Swifty Blue and he's got, he's got a lot of things going on right now. <laughs> checking he, in? He's checking in. Yeah, I didn't check it with him today, bro. You're right. Nah. Well, you should have. Nah, nah, I'm not going okay, to. You need that pass, man. <laughs> no, checking in, bro. How do you feel about the whole Swifty Blue situation, man? Nah, I, I, I see what he's doing. It's, um, it's like a whole, like, uh, my, my opinion, the 6 9 without the security, brother. You need, I think it's it's like he's just trying to make a he's it's a marketing scheme, bro. Like he's doing it to push his numbers and everything. But um, it's gotta I say take it easy, bro. Like it's a little too much. But hey, to each his own, bro. You know, you're young, you learn. You know. You think he's really about that life? I uh, you know I heard I heard he's with it, but you gotta when you when you do that kind of shit, you gotta be really with it. Like really, you gotta be watching. So he, so you know he has to stay ready. If he's gonna do what he's doing now, he has to stay ready and and continue to stay ready. Because these fools are gonna, they'll air you out, bro. You play that tough role, people are gonna air you out. You're gonna get tested. And if you ain't got 6 9 security, <laughs> you're, you're a target. How do you feel about him not signing to a black label and all that stuff? Um, I think it was, what he said was, it, was, um, it, was, it just wasn't worded, worded correctly. We have a lot of people nowadays in, in, in um, our, like, um, say, like Latin rap or Chicano rap, they call it. Um, that, that are good speakers, bro. We have from like, uh, like I'll say who's good at speaking right now is like, I'll say my number two, like my, my two people that are like solid at speaking and know what to, know to say correctly would be Bozo in any means. They know how to word it correctly. I just think he worded it um, improper. Like he could have, he could have said it in a different way to make it, you know, sound better. You know what I'm saying? But I know he wants to keep it just like, just like the blacks want to keep it, um, black owned. 
he wanted to keep the brown on. So I, I feel him on that, but he just did it. He just did it incorrectly. He just worded it differently. He worded it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how I found that. So what uh, what artists do you look up to now? Well, who are your like go-to rappers? My go-to rappers now? Damn, bro. Anybody my, in particular? Uh, not really, bro. It's like a, a turn of the tides. Everything's different. Yeah. Now the generation now, even the old school people that are there, they're they're trying to make a mark in it too. Like Snoop buying Death Row. I um I'm not I'm 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 a fan of Snoop, but I'm not like like on politics, kinda always Long Beach and Wilmington, we don't really we don't really get along like that. But um I could I wouldn't say I wouldn't sign to him. But if that if that if that uh that paper looked nice and my lawyer said it was right, I would. I can't say that I wouldn't. You know what I'm saying? But it has to be over it has to be looked because Learning this game and being in this game for a certain amount of time and, and doing contracts and doing shows with people, like I know that, that I got screwed over at certain times, but I know that um, I learned from that. So everything has to be checked, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, but. And that's the, that's the thing with uh, signing contracts. You gotta know or have somebody that knows the verbiage and what it, what it means because back in the day, People just signed a contract because they, they thought they were going to get a bag and they ended up getting robbed. Yeah, they get do free shows. Yep. You know, you, oh, you got you to gotta put in work. You got to put in work. You do all these free shows and you continue to do free shows and they're getting paid on the back end. Back in the days, it was CDs. So they will go with boxes of CDs, sell to mom and pops, make a killing, bro. And their sound scan was good. So they were making money off sound scan and they were selling more on mom and pop stores than they were selling on sound scan. Now it's all digital. Yeah. So it's a harder game, but, but yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta learn, bro. You gotta learn from mistakes. Everybody's going to make a bad, uh, like if you're a good artist and people want to sign you, you're going to make a couple mistakes, but you got to learn from it. Just like life, bro. You got to learn from everything. You know what I'm saying? You make a mistake, you got to learn from your mistake and, and, and go forward, not making those same mistakes. You know what I'm saying? That, that's what I think is the smartest thing you can do as a, in life period. So, so when did you first get into the rap game? I got into the rap game, I'll say um, 2000, two, maybe like 99, 2000. I, um, I was just rapping. I had a DJ system, so I was just rapping on it, like straight, like CD burner, like rapping off a of, off of record of the instrumental record or the, or the CD record, the instrumental. And then um, I was just putting, putting my little raps to it. At first, I was just, you know, like you hear music and you just mimic it. And then I learned how to do my own thing. It was more freestyles. I learned how to freestyle before writing, but I was good at it. So I would freestyle and record it off a of regular ass DJ mic and I recorded it and it came out good. People were feeling it in the hood. So, I, and then I, I was, um, I was getting a little buzz, right? I would, I would make little CDs, a couple tracks here and there. And then there was people buzzing in the neighborhood too that were making music. So they would put, they would make like a, like a ghetto compilation tape, like a little CD. A mixtape. Yeah. They'll make a, a mixtape with a bunch of people from the neighborhood and just, ship it around so i was on i was i was part of that so that was pretty dope and that's um and then that's what introduced me i got i met um i was at a party and then the dj's like hey man you know get on the mic because i knew the dj he's like get on the mic and rock it and it was in carson and i was at a, at a party and I, I rocked that mic dude i was i was killing it and then um that's when i met um i guess dad it was a party with i said daz and um, um my boy fino now like rest in peace my boy fino i met them through that because they thought it was a CD playing. He's like, hey, dude, that's you rapping? i like, yeah, man, you want to hear another one? And I just kept rapping. And he heard it, and he was like, damn, you're hard, fool. This, this work. And it was crazy back then, because at that time, like Carson and Wilmington and San Pedro, they didn't rock with each other at all. So him, him taking that extra bound, being from Carson, saying like, hey, man, let's, let's work. And I didn't think nothing of it, because, you know, like, you know, it's, it's music, bro. Like, so... I was like, hell yeah, this work, bro. And that's how, that's how I started working with him. I just went there one time. I already had everything ready. And back, and back in those days, when I used to record, I used to have to record a whole song through. There was no stopping, do your hook, do the verse. I used to rap straight through. So I was basically training myself to, to, like, to knock it out, like full breath. You know what I'm saying? Just kill it. So when I went there, it was a breeze. You know what I'm saying? It was to see how you can track it and do everything like that. So it was pretty dope. That fool put me on. So Spanish Fly, man, that's an old school Chicano group, man. Back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s when they came out, you know, uh, 
18 with a bullet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, very popular in the Chicano uh, scene. Mm -hmm. uh, they were one of the founding uh, forefathers in the Chicano industry, I think. And uh, the fly part of, of, it stands for Foolish Local Youngster. Yeah. Crazy, you know, and Spanish fly, it goes together. It, like peanut butter and jelly, man. It's a great group. And for you to be in it now, you came later. It was, you know what, it was also called uh, Fools Lighting Yesca. Oh, is that right? Yeah, that's, that, they're different, different ways of, of putting it, oh, okay. but that's what their shit back then. That's crazy, I didn't know that. It, it was crazy because, like, they came out when I was, like, I was a youngster when they came out. Like, really, really young. And um, to be honest with you, I didn't really listen to it. But I knew of it. I knew about 18 with the bullet. I knew of it, but I didn't play it. I was more like playing what was trending at that moment, right? Because that's, that's, a, that's a, the Spanish fly was a generation before me. You get me? So I wasn't, I wasn't hit to it. I looked at it like, ah, ah, you know, but, but I knew who they were. So it was, it, was, it, was, it was pretty cool. And then to come out, you know, everybody talks about who came out first and who, who originated this um, Chicano rap, with, with Shiga, which is just hip hop. But um, I think it was them, dog, because the time, they, the time frame they came out, it was before the 90s. Like, 80, end of, end of, end of 89, Frost came out in 90, 91. All right. And then you have Lighter Shade of Brown, you have everybody else, you know. But uh, they came out before, it just... So I think Spanish Fly, the original Spanish Fly, was as said, Rich Rock, Daz, and Tricks. And then they came out right before, it just it wasn't as popular as Frost when he came out. Right. And, you know, the... Uh, and I agree with that, because so, they were popular, but they didn't catch that wave like... Frosted and lighter shade of brown. Yeah, they were they were marketable. Sale. They were marketable and they took yeah, off. Yeah, right? they took off clean. Yeah, but eighteen with a bullet, like like I said, they were like the originators, and uh, they had good stuff. They yeah, just they came had, out a little, I think, a little too early. You know, mm -hmm. it was right before their time, and like I said, afterwards everybody took off. But uh, they, they, like I said, everybody knows Spanish Fly. You know, they, yeah. they, they were good artists, and they were, like I said, they were the originals. It, ju it just didn't branch off. You know, no, they, no. They, they, they broke up before it could be what it, was, be right. what it could have been. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I think that was, um, that was but they're still big. You can't say they, weren't, they didn't start it. And there's a lot of controversy about that, too, dog. Like, right. I, got, I caught a lot of slack from certain, like, San Diego artists and, like, from royalty to, to Night Out, Rest in Peace. I, 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 I had my, my conversations with them about the whole situation, you know, because people tend to leave them out, leave what it is, you know, you gotta, that, I wasn't part of that, but I'm not gonna neglect that they were one of the first or the first, you know what I'm saying? So that's, that's, that's a, that's a statement, you know, that, that they are, in my eyes and from what I see and from the dates and from the year they came out, they were the originators. So if you wanna say who started Chicano rap, it was Spanish Fly, right. without a doubt. So you can question on that. We can we can run the dates and run the numbers, but that's what it is, my boy. And just Frost made it, Frost made it um, like high. He made it up there it to trendy. a different plateau. Yeah. So I respect that. He's an originator of like of you know marketing value or whatever you know. But Spanish Fly started it. So that's that's I can stand on that. How do you feel about people putting Chicano rap in a different category in the box? Yeah, versus you know hip hop. I would say that that the music that like we do, like Spanish Fly now, even before like back in when it first came out on like on Power when we were signing when we were signing Pocos Pero Locos, I would say that it's it's hip hop, but they put it in a box. Like when we when we were in like Tower Records or our warehouse, like what they did was actually they created a like an area. It was mixed all the way through. Like you go and you have to find it like in the regular selection of hip hop and rap but they made a selection. They kind of iced us off, but they made it so they could find it faster. You know what I'm saying? But regardless of that, um, Chicano rap, that's what they're gonna label it, bro. Like, you can't, um, until, we, until like, but now, if you look at it now, dude, it's not, even, it's not even Chicano rap. They say Chicano rap, but it's not. It's more hip hop. Because you, you can put a hip hop beat in front of a Chicano rapper and they'll rock it. They, it's all that orale ese shit is gone. All that, um, you know, that, all that lingo is, is, is gone. Now, maybe one word or two will make it cool, but that's just like, um, like it's like the blacks, they use words. It's just a, like, I'll say essay or something like that, but I'm, but I'm rapping regular. I'm not, I'm not spitting in a certain way. You know slang, what I'm saying? It's a slang yeah, word. Yeah, it's just a yeah. slang word. And it's hip right now. Right. Just like the, just like the lowrider scene. Yeah. 
everything's hip right now. Latinos are coming up, bro. Like right now, it's popping. You know and, and I've seen just this. be real about it. Yeah, just be real about it and don't don't follow that six nine trend, bro, because it's gonna hurt you. And then uh, how do you feel about that, man? What six nine? About, uh, about just people in general uh, faking the funk. The, the funk. Do it. I'm, it. You know what? They're just trying to make. Um, they're trying to make. Uh, they're trying to trend on the internet. Yeah. They're trying to make a wave on it, but um, it just. I think. Um, I think when you're not that big of an artist, that it's gonna bite you in the ass. You know what I'm saying? People are gonna test your gangster. You see all these rappers from out of town coming here, even though that they're, the majority of them are, are black artists that are getting hurt. But once we start buzzing and we start doing our thing, once Latinos are doing it like they're doing it right now, and if you follow that trend, you're going to be tested, bro. You're going to go out of town, you're going to be tested. You know what I'm saying? So just if you're going to play that route, you better up your security door, get homies that are around you that are 100. You know what I'm saying? And I, everybody around me is a 100. You know what I'm saying? And then people, it's a trip because... Um, People in my neighborhood, they wear red rag, right? So they're like, damn, look at these Norteños, you know what I'm saying? It's not even that. It's just, if you know Wilmington and you know the east side of Wilmington, it's always been a red rag. Way before the gang, the gang and, and um, prison politics has always been a red rag. So you know you know. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Well, I see the, the red W on, on your hand. Yeah, yeah, so. red W. But that's, that's so it's always been red, yeah. It's always been red. It's been, you know, conflict with the other side. So it's always been that. So it's, it's just, it's history. It's, it's, it's been that. You see documentaries, you see all that, but there's more to it. Yeah. But it's always been that. So just like other neighborhoods wear another neighborhoods, other neighborhoods wear red too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they have the reason to. But you know in the Chicano culture, it's you know, uh, the red means Norteño, blue means Sureño, and then that's that's the way it's been for uh, as long yeah, as I can Yeah, but if you live in LA, you know, you know who's yeah. Who's, if you know, you yeah, know. yeah. There's a few. There's only yeah. a few. Right. So you, if you live in LA, you know what's up. So that's why I don't like. But yeah, but he was like, yeah, this we're wearing red. What are you? Did he get signed to Goto's? You know what I'm just saying? No, I'm just saying this. As we must, dog, we wear the east side of town wears red. It is what it is. Would you ever do anything with Goto's? Do you a know feature what, um, with them? Do a feature? Well, if the money's right. You know what I'm saying? Like it's um, we're in, we're in an age now. Like we're trying to we're trying to we're trying to make it like blend. But if, if it's genuine, like if the talent is genuine, and they want to do a feature or something, I'm with it. You know what I'm saying? But it has to be, it has to be genuine. See, like nowadays, a lot of artists, man, I'm not going to pay for no feature. I haven't paid for no feature. I'm not going to. The people that I'm around are really talented. So why do I have to invest in somebody else? My investment is into the name, into the brand. So if I work with an artist and I do features with them, they're doing it out of the love of the, the music. And I did it. We have, we have some big features in that are coming up and we have big features that were on our previous albums and on mine. So then they, they show love and they, 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 um, they respected the talent and they just, they show, we just back and forth, bro. That's what it's all about. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're trying to build something. And if you're going to be charging high ass rates, we ain't going to work. We ain't going to work with you. You're, you're treating us like, like every other artist would, you know what I'm saying? And then, and then on top of that, you pay for a feature and you get a crappy feature. You want, you want, you want to hear that fool's ability. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to get no, because how I looked at it back then, bro. When you hear certain artists, right? I'm gonna say it like, um, say a Latino artist back in the days would pay for like a Snoop feature, okay? And there was a lot of them, and they got it low. They got it for the low. They didn't pay top price, but it feels like I feel like the feature they gave was mediocre. It was like, and then they'll throw jabs in between that. So it's like, oh, the homie came with the money. Now we back in EO. We're like, why is he got it? Why you gotta put him out there like that? Yeah, he came with the money. Now we're back. But nah, dog, like, see, like, and then it's like, it seems like freestyles without giving your full, your full amount. So when you do a feature with somebody that you respect their talent, you give more because you want to challenge them on that beat. You know what I'm saying? You want to be like, damn, that fool came hard. I'm going to rewrite my verse. That's what people do, dog. They're like, oh, I'm going to do my shit again. You know what I'm saying? So I think um, if you're going to, if you're going to pay for a feature, you got to get the best of that fool's ability. Because a lot of people don't give their full ability when they're getting paid. They just want to get their money and roll on and charge you for a video and charge you for this, charge you for that. You're paying already and they want to charge you for the studio. It's not about that, bro. It's about, it's about respecting somebody's ability and, and giving them everything you got, you know, as a, as a good business partner. You know what I'm saying? That's have you ever, have you ever been, uh, have you ever reached out for a feature and somebody gave you a, a high ass price? You know what? I, I had offers of, of fools um, hitting me up like this work. And they're like, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm only charging two grand, three, five grand. Wow. I'm like, 
I'm good, bro. I go, I go features, uh, features are not in, in my budget. I'm not paying nobody for features. I'm good right now. I have a solid, I have a solid, um, I have a solid team and we're not investing in features right now. That's my response. $5,000 for a feature. Oh no. I, I want to say five, I say three, 3,000. Okay. And if, you know, you but I've heard that five. You can kind of narrow it down. A lot a of feature. Chicano rappers are talking about that. Yeah. But yeah. That's, that's, that's ridiculous. That's, that's excessive, but you know, I mean. God, and, and, and they're not even good. I won't even give them a hundred bucks. Right. Like I won't even, I, like, I'll pay for the studio time, but I'm <laughs> like, I'm not going to pay you three thousand, four, five thousand. That's a lot of money for a feature. Oh yeah. Bro. That's including the video. Right? <laughs> Keep your video, bro. Right. It's just, it's certain things, bro. Like, I'm, I, like, I, how, look at, I know this sounds cocky, but how am I going to pay for a feature when I can outwrap you? How am I going to pay you when I'm going to come harder on the song? And I know you're going to give me your regular spit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to pay for that. So, but a lot of, dude, but a lot of people show love and respect. You know what I'm saying? So I just hit them with, oh, 5,000? Don't trip. I usually charge 6,000. So this is meet in the middle and do a track. That's there my response. Go. Right. So and then, then that's it. They'll put like a, they'll, you'll see like, they'll like it or some shit, but they won't, re- and it's done. No more conversating with nice. that though no more. I just, that's the truth, bro. I'm not going to. I'm not going to like, but you know, and everybody needs to get paid for the skill and their yeah. ability, bro. I agree with that. I agree with that. But at certain points, like if they, like if someone respects you and your artistry, be reasonable. they would, they would be reasonable and they'd just be like, Hey, you know, like I, like I tell everybody dog, like who am I? I? I came from Spanish fly and as a solo artist, I'm, I wasn't as known. So I'm building my solo artist name. So anybody that was, that was working with me, ask me if I charged them. I didn't charge them nothing. I go, shoot me the B dog. And if it's solid, I'll jump on it. Because I got to build my solo name. Why am I going to charge you top dollar? When I could, I'll be like, oh, I'm from Spanish Fly, you know, 500, six, a grand. And if you want a video, another 500. I'm not going to do that to you, bro. I'm not going to rock that with you. We're going we're gonna to blow up. We're going to do it. If it makes money in the process, we're going to break each other off. You know what I'm saying? So that's, what, that's how I learned from a lot of people. Like the people now, from, um, from Lottie the G to, to um, uh, there's a bunch of artists, um, Hectic. From, you know, I'm working with, with doing a track with Baldacci. You know what I'm saying? I'm, and then there's a bunch of artists, dog, that, that are showing love. Like, I respect. You know what I'm saying? So even Misfit. I gotta, I'm working on someone with him, too. So it's, it's a lot of artists that are showing love. You know what I'm saying? So I respect that. And Crook the Felon, he gave me, he gave me two verses. Came down. Fucking loved it and dropped, dropped a verse. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And Little Rob, bro. We just did a track with Little Rob. He didn't. We, we go back, you know what I'm saying? It goes back. And so, solid ass people, dude, that's, that's love, bro. He didn't hit us with a number. But you gotta, it don't work like that with everybody, bro. Like, it's, it's how you are. It's what you bring. It's how you speak to people. It's the respect. And when you give somebody respect and they respect you back, that's, that's how you build a, that's how you build a, like a connection. You know what I'm saying? You can't expect for certain people to rock with you when you're talking shit. All right, because everybody watches everything. There's podcasts, there's, there's everything, so if you think a person's not watching you to say comments or throw jabs, they know it. You know what I'm saying? So you don't, don't, don't talk shit and expect for them to be part of whatever you're doing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like, yeah, that's, that's how I look at it. That's good. And little Rob, man, he, he's one of the, he's a, he's a big influence in, the, in Chicano rap, you know? Yeah, he's big time. He builds his brand and it's, it's going, you know, it's, it's still continuing to go. No, I, re- I remember when we're working, we're working at, um, we're signed to Ida and Kool-Aid, which was Pocos Pero Locos. You know, we had the Power 106 hookup. We had radio play. Everything was getting played. And we, um, that we heard the, because he sent, he sent um, Kool-Aid the Summer Nights track before it came out. I remember hearing that shit in the studio. Hearing a you know summer nights, oh, like, man, damn crazy. that shit's a banger, bro. Like yeah, this gonna we're gonna play it on the station next week. And I'm like damn this shit is dope. I go this gonna this is gonna do big. And then I remember um, I remember being invited to his music video. So on summer nights like you, I'm I'm in this video. I, you see it because we pulled up as we're on our way to going. I don't know if we we're going to like a studio to uh, practice for a show or something. And then um, we pulled up, and then I did like a scene in there, right? I had my little my little green screen background, like rubbing my hands, basic movement shit, like five minutes of a of, of, of promo. And then everybody in the hood, like all my, all my all my family and everything, they clown me for that shit because what it was is I'm I'm rubbing my hands, right? And then they green screen, they use that part in like five different scenes. 
So I'm doing the same shit in here at the ice, the ice cream truck, the party, the... So I got a lot of heat for that, like joking, you know what I'm saying? But they used it. So I had that look they needed for the video, but yeah. That's, yeah, that's clout, dog. I mean, clout. come on. Yeah. You see in five different parts? Yeah, did you see me doing the same shit, right. though? Because right. I were only there for a second, bro. Right. So they used me, like, they just, you know, chopping it up, yeah. green screen. So you, you put it in different portions, different places. Yeah. But yeah, I got a lot of heat for that. Like a lot of joke, you know, fucking people clowning me and shit. Like the memes today. And yeah, shit. it would have been it would have been a meme now, bro. Yeah. Big time. Like Michael Jordan crying and shit. Like, yeah, this fool, he's rubbing sanitizer in his hands or some <laughs> shit. Like, <laughs> some shit, bro. He dodged the <laughs> yeah, bullet. Yeah, yeah, dodged a sick-ass bullet. Uh, but shit, hell yeah, that's a big ass video. Of, yeah. uh, what, fifty million or sixty million? And then on Spotify, his big, big artist, bro. He didn't have to do, he didn't have to show us love like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? But he did. Summer Pulled Nights up. is one of my, my my favorite tracks, man. Yeah, that's a dope track. That's a dope track. Every summer, you know, I'm bumping that. It's it, it, it's just the whole vibe is cool, man. You know, the whole yep. vibe is cool. They say uh, what what's the biggest track? It's from it's either that one, um, Lean Like a Cholo. Yeah, and, right. Um, and uh, and uh, La Raza. But if you look at the numbers, he, he towers all of them. Who does? Little Rob. Oh, really? Yeah, he towers all of them. But it was, they, I think the most profitable song was Lean Like a Cholo because he had ringtones. It was that age that he came in with that song. Right. And he killed their ringtones and it was, it was mostly independent. Right. So he, he, I think he made the most money off, that, off all those songs. Frost was, Frost was on a label. He, he, got, he got money, but... He didn't get money like that. He burned through that shit probably the first year or some yeah, shit. Yeah, absolutely. He had a year. He had a, he had a, he had a solid year of living right. I, I, I don't know, but I'm just saying. But regardless of that, the most profitable one was, was Kilo on that. You know what I'm saying? Being like a cholo, they were bumping that in the clubs. They were bumping that everywhere. So. Hey, man, when, when I first heard that shit, dog, uh, to be honest with you, because I was like, man, that shit's corny. I, I, that's my opinion. I was like, man, that shit's corny. And they were like, hey, man, you going to come to the video? I'm like, nah, I'm not going to that shit, bro. Like, <laughs> but I should have went. The homie Dazzle was in there. He was doing his thing and shit. But I was like, nah, I ain't going to that shit, bro. Like, I don't you know. It but, sounded corny, but it, it caught on. It was popping. Yeah, yeah. It was very trendy. No, I was just being like, I was a youngster, bro. So I was, I was like, I was always like testing the waters. And I was coming, coming from where I came from, dog. I was like, like, I was pressing rappers at the time, dog. Like someone was, we'll do a show like in Texas. And the local artists would be talking shit. Now, uh, you know, the, the pillow talk to me, you know, like telling me, oh, you know, this fool said that, that what the fuck are you guys headlining? And I'll go and press people, you know, like, oh, we're going to be at, like, I'll, I'll be pressing people. So I got a lot of, like, heat from, from the label and from, my, from the guys in the group. But like, hey, man, take it down. Like, I'm like, no, nah, man, this fool's talking shit. We're gonna go, I'm going to go over there and I'm going to check them. You know, pull that fool to the side, take a walk with them or something. Right. But that's what it was, bro. Like, it was, I was a, a hothead. And I, you know. That's what it was at that time. I was, I was only like not even 21 before when I was touring with them. Damn. When I was doing the Vocal Spell Local Tour and all that. I was Vocal a youngster. Vocal Spell Local, I remember that. Man. That, that was, it was real popular. It was popping back in the day. Now what happened, what happened with, with that? Well, they still have their record label. They have like, they have some artists. They have some good artists on their, on their team. Um, they always been doing something, but it's just not as, as trendy as it was back then. I think... Um, like Chicano rap was popping back then at that time, but I think uh, reggaeton knocked it out the ballpark because anybody that was messing with Pocos, uh, like Chicano rap, not them, just in general, because ODM had a radio show too. Right. It was a lot of stuff going on. So they were all rocking with the Chicano rap and then reggaeton came. They, everybody went to that and started pushing that. Yeah. Even, even they started, they even had a radio station with reggaeton because they were combining that with Chicano rap. Yeah. There's some songs that my boy Daz has that he did um, with like Dago and all that that didn't come out. Calderon? Yeah. Oh, wow. That Don Omar song? Don that, Omar, um, yeah. What's that song, though? <sighs> that famous song they had that was in um, Fast and the Fast Furious. Fast and Furious? What's uh, it called? Um, Bandolero? Bandolero, yeah. Daz did a remix that. Dope. Dope, brother. Dope. And I don't think it ever came out. I'm going to leak that shit. Wow. I'm like, it's dope. He did a like a, a kind of like Spanglish version of it, and he dropped a verse on that. And it was just a dope song, bro. He was doing it with that. Yeah, reggaeton's really big. It's big. It's huge. And it's still big. Yeah, it's huge. It's still big. It's it's uh, you know look at look at uh, Bad Bunny man. <laughs> ah, <Bad Bunny. laughs> look, look at his look at his his his, uh, his views, man. Real talk. Check out his views on YouTube, man. They're 
Yeah, I mean, control. He's got a couple that are a billion views. What is he like, number three in the world? Yeah. I think the only person that beat him is like Ed Sherman. Right. And he sells it out at every show, man. Every event. Regardless of what he did. You're right. Regardless. You know, that even got him more that even got him more fans. Probably so. Dude, and 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 a weird You're now. Right. In a weird generation right, right. now. Back then now you would lose fans. Oh yeah. But that's, now why, that's why Ricky Martin back. never came out right. until now. Right. Because it's trending. <laughs> God, bro. I mean, this is it's it's, it's so big, man. They're making you know, I don't I don't doubt the guy. I mean, he, he's doing what he's supposed to do. Make millions. Make your money. Get your bag, man. Because that's what it's all about. If you're if you're in the inter- entertainment business, man, you need to get your money. I think it's um I think it's it's cool, but if, if it wasn't genuine, right? I think it's he don't need to do that. He's too big to be um to be faking the funk or trying to make a trend. Yeah. So I think he just did it just to do it. Yeah. If not, it's like why, bro? Like you want to get bigger than what you are now? He's probably bored. He's bored. He's yeah. like, yeah, let me just let me let me wake up the internet. Yeah. Right, what it was. Yeah. And it six worked. nine ain't doing nothing no more, so let me wake up the internet. Right. Because <laughs> remember, he's like here and there. Where is six nine? Now? I don't know, bro. That fool, that fool, he he had the internet popping. He was. Now Swifty. <laughs> now, oh, not 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 like that, but yeah. <laughs> no, he's trying to, but that those are those are numbers he can't reach. Yeah, you, you don't need, no checking number could reach uh, what six nine did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You have to check as long as you don't be snitching now and all that yeah, shit, we're, right. we're good. Cause I don't think he can get away with that around here. Man, what 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 Chicano rappers are 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 doing good right now in your in your opinion? Chicano rap or just Latin rapper like Latin Mexican, rappers, Mexican rappers? Yeah, that are dope. Um, there's a, there's a lot of them, dog. From you know, King Lil G is still doing it. He puts out here and there, but he's still he's still fire. Um, Bozo's killing it. Bozo's hard. He's 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 popping right now. You even have your Swifty Blue. Swifty Blue's doing it. Um, there you have Little Weirdo's dope. I think he's dope. I like his little style he got. You have... Um, damn, there's a lot, bro. Even the youngsters are doing it. But like some of the music I don't really like. Okay. I think, the, um, I think now the, 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 like, they're just youngsters. They, they trend because of their little basic style. But they can't... like. How could I say like, okay, there was a song that was out from, um, from, uh, what's that girl's name? Um, there was, it was Peso Peso. It was Snow the Product. There was a song with Snow the Product and Peso Peso and another artist. And, um, you can tell like, cause Snow the Product is, she's not, she's in her mid thirties, right? Yeah. I'm only like a couple years older than her. So she's not a new rapper. She, she did a track with them, Peso Peso and another artist. Ah, what's his name? I think it was part of the Shoreline Mafia, one of those guys. And she killed him on it, bro. She killed them on that track. Like, like just killed them on it. Like, it wasn't even, like, no competition on that track. It just shows you the older style of hip-hop, there's just more put to it with your lyrics and the way you combine it and the way you put it. Like, compared to the lazy flow and, like, almost basically, like, basic, like basic freestyles are underneath just basically waving their voice. Like doing yeah, man, like just basic, nothing really to it. Uh, but that's what kids are like. They're they're um, what is it um? Their complex right now is basic. Yeah. So they like this basic music, but they put dope beats to it. So I, I, the the beats are hard, but the lyrics are trash. But I agree. Uh, I agree. That's just that's just my opinion. And it reminds me of uh, you you heard what DJ Academics said about old school rappers that they're dusty and. You know, kind of, kind of disrespect. That foot's controversial, bro. Yeah. He's controversial. He's he's not, um, like, DJ Academic, he's just all about the clout. You've seen him. Everybody's on his ass right now. Everybody's on his ass. Same thing with um, um, No Jumper. What's his name? Um, uh, Poetic Flacco. Yeah. Oh, my God, bro. That guy, dog. How do you feel about Poetic? Poetic Flacco, dog. I think he needs to move out of L.A. He's a walking target, bro. Straight up. And he like if he if he he's in a he's in a run into the wrong person they're gonna they're gonna pull his whole card like big time and he's a regular person bro he's just doing what he's he's just doing what what he's supposed to be doing at work so basically he's Adam Adam twenty two yeah. got him got him hyped up to put out stuff that he, with his name stamped on it that he's gonna get tested for well I'm surprised that you know like he probably got a green light on him he did the American Cholo thing yeah yeah he has a green light on him bro right. regardless of that like but he just because the shit he's doing. Yeah, he's, he's doing too much. He's doing too much, and he don't know. He don't know what's going on. He's putting himself into politics, street politics, not prison politics. 
he's putting himself in there and he needs to, he needs to tone it down because he don't know what he's doing and then people are going to if you watched it even you seen the whack 100 right yeah when it was on that he even told him hey we need to chill <laughs> you had all these you had all these essays in here hoping that you were here they, it wasn't even that they went with a positive vibe but still like right. but still like it was if he was there would have probably got turned up because of all the all the shit that was going what do you think would have happened if poetic flock was there he would have been inside one of the offices hiding and they went and made a big deal because they wanted to make a point and talk on the show. But what if he was talking on the show? Oh, then it would have been. But he would have been on best behavior. He would have, he would have been more trying to. Same thing with Adam. He would have been more trying to squash it than, than, um, than go into it like he did on, that, on, the, on the FaceTime. You know, when you're on FaceTime, you're at home or you're wherever you're at. Your location. You're going you're gonna to be able to have a little like vibe or, or speak up on certain things because you're not in front of that person. So it would have been the same way. They would have been on their best behavior. Trying to smooth the, smooth the situation and not really step into it. But imagine, imagine if they did. That would have been gangster. <laughs> yeah, it would, have been, it would have been respectable, but a lot of shit would have happened that day. You think they would have got jumped? Um, if, if he was disrespectful or either one of them was disrespectful. Like, because it wasn't about, but it wasn't about that. See, that whole, that whole thing wasn't about. It was about resolving. Yeah, it was about it was resolving. Resolving an issue. Yeah. So I see, the, I, I see from both ends, bro. I see from... From you go, you went strong, and I see from like you overdid it. But I don't think uh, when I when I hear it, it, it seems like okay, well, we just put up to show people supporting, you know. And and if anybody if they were and nobody was tripping and everybody wasn't just cool, just being there, then it's solid, you know what I'm saying. And and, and it seemed like that because no one tripped. It would have been talked about. That would have been more. I would have been in their feed the next day, if someone would have did anything. Any anybody would have raised their voice or yelled, they would have posted it. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what is it newsworthy? Of course. Yeah. So yeah, but it was it was, they went they went with good intentions, not bad. So American Trolls did the whole Power 106 thing. Uh, I watched it. it. It was taken down. Yeah. A day later, I don't know how, how soon it was taken down, but the one, same day that that post it was came the out. Same day. Yeah. Okay. The it, same moment. Yeah. Same moment. It, it was taken down, and I was it, it. It stirred a lot of controversy, man. Poetic Flacco. He went on a live. And he, 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 he said something about that. And uh, that's when the whole no jumper thing, they, they went over there to go resolve the problem. What do you think came out out of all that? With that, I think that, I think the whole thing that started, that made it worse was that post. And that was part of, what is it, Tyreek? Yeah. Tyreek was part of that. That helped with that post. And he, I think he stirs up a lot of, a lot of things with the black and brown community. I think he's the problem. It's like, you know, you say uh, for certain people need to go before for the for the black and brown unity to to happen. I think he's one of the biggest problems. He's smart. He's an intelligent man, dude. I give him that. I'm very intelligent. But he, when you when you speak and you talk about history and you talk about certain things. But but when you when you say other racist comments, because there's some stuff he said, bro, that was like, oh, my God, that got me like infuriated. Like I was like, you know, like a lot of people like he can get hurt for that kind of shit. So what he did, he, that he, he ruins his whole, his whole, like, um, how would I say, um, everything that he said that was, that was intelligent, it kind of gets thrown to the side because of what he says. When he ends it, he ends it with a, with a racist mark. Like his, it's like, it's, with a shot he kill, yeah, he, he yeah. kills it with that. But yeah, I think eventually, um, yeah, cause I don't, I don't even want to speak on that guy. Cause he upsets me. I can't even get my words out, but yeah, but that guy Tyreek is. For, for black and brown unity to 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 start even even I can't say continue because it's not even there for it to start he has to be out of it completely because he's not part of it he's a problem he's not the solution you know what I'm saying he's not he's not a he's not a solution at all because he's he's completely negative smart intelligent and negative at the same time how can you you know what I'm saying it's like a toxic woman dangerous mixture yeah it's toxic you say all the right, you, you give all the, you give, you know the answers to the test, but you don't use them. You give, like, it's like a, like a, like a horrible therapist. You know what I'm saying? But they have more issues than you. Because every therapist goes to another therapist after they're doing their job, right? But he's 10 times worse than you. <laughs> so he needs to see two therapists, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I think um, for black and brown, you need to even start, even to make a, to even make like a, a good, um, a good leap into the, like to be positive. He needs to be out of it because he's not helping it. He's making it worse. So I saw somewhere where a guilt from American Cholo is going to attempt to 
to to talk to him. Not a temp. He I, he says he's gonna do a podcast. He's got Tariq Nasheed that's gonna be on. It drinks with Jinx, right? Uh, I yeah. think that he well, tried. Yeah, he did both. It on there. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that that that, that was a couple weeks ago, right? Yeah. Yeah, he said ASAP. So I don't know. They might, I don't think they're gonna. I I don't think they'll ever sit down. No. I think it because I think it'd get out of control. Oh, okay. That just my. I I want him to. That'd be amazing. But I think it would get like really out of control. I think they'll disrespect each other. Like big time. I think because I think um, it looks like like Tyreek will talk down to him, and then American Control is not going to stand for that. You know what I'm saying? And then so it's back and forth, brother. It's like. It's just, there's no really, I don't know, but I, I want to see that. that. That's newsworthy right there. Adam22 can post that, right? And oh, put yeah. that out. So that, I'm just saying, like, that'd be amazing if they do that. If they do that, they need to, it just needs to be them. You know what I'm saying? Just literally, they're just them. Nobody needs to come with them. Because if someone comes with them, it's, it's, it'll stir it up. You know what I'm saying? It'll, make, it'll, it'll pop off. You know what I'm saying? I'll go. I'll go. I'll be there. Invite me, I'll be there. Yeah, I, I, no, I'm just saying, but no, I, I just think that'd be good for everybody if they did, if it was positive and they came. But you know what? Everybody acts different when you're in person. You know, there's no internet, there's no keyboard behind, in front of you, and there's no screen. You know what I'm saying? And you're talking to a person over the internet. When you're in front of a man, speaking to a man, speaking man words, speak, like everything, it's totally different. You know what I'm saying? As long as you keep that same energy when you leave that room. You know what I'm saying? As long as you keep that positive energy, if you squash something, as you leave that room, instead of being like, ah, this is pointless. You know how some people are? Some people just can't get over it. So they just, they walk out of the door like, man, this is a waste of my time. And then they, and shit still goes into the internet and creates more drama. You know what I'm saying? So it's pointless of a meeting. But yeah, if they take it in, like real, like, like they should, because they're both older, which would be amazing. And it'd be a good move. I think you would too. I agree. I think it would be a good sit down. Uh, I think they, they can resolve a lot of things, you know, uh, settle their differences. Ho- ho- I'm hopeful for that. Yeah. Uh, it could go left. It could go left, yeah. You know, uh, at any moment. But like they say, hey, it's newsworthy. It would be. You know, I, I, I see they're, I see they don't really go left that much when they're talking to pe- each other. Like even with um, America, you see, you see where American Controller was talking to Snow the product. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was that was horrible. That was horrible. Like I, I lost. Like I was a big Snow the Snow the product fan. After hearing her speak, and she wouldn't even let him get a word out. And then her using other reasons to her conversation, saying that because I'm part of the, um, because she's lesbian. That but that wasn't even the conversation. It was. I lost all respect for her that day, bro. I, I, I lost all respect and I was, I'm, I'm not even a fan no more. I don't even play her music no more because that day. I'm like, man, you gotta, <laughs> but you're right. You know, like some people can't, can't speak or they speak with anger or they, or they, they build themselves up. You know what I'm saying? So she basically spoke like a toxic woman that day and not, not spoke like, not even he, even he had to exit from that conversation. So that day I lost all respect for her. And that's, that's my honest opinion. So I was like, man, she, don't, she, don't, she needs to learn how to speak too. I'm not the perfect speaker. I know who is. I know people that can speak better than me. I know people that can, that can get it out way better than I could. So, but that day was, that, that, shit, that shit was horrible. I ain't feeling that. So yeah, so. A lot's going on. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, we're, we're in the age of social media, man. Uh, uh, you know, platforms and everybody's trying to deliver a story. Mm-hmm. A big star, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's trying to do it. No Jumper, everybody, American Cholo. Yeah. Y- you name it, man. Everybody's trying to do it, right? And, and, and to, to each their own. You know, everybody deserves that. If you, if you got a platform, you have every right to have anybody you want on and talk about whatever you want to talk about. All right? That, that's yeah. your platform. Exactly. You, you do as you want. But you have to be, you have to take full responsibility of whatever happens. Oh, exactly. You do. Yeah. You're solely responsible for all that. It's your platform. Yep. You agree with me? Yeah, I agree with you on that. Because you, what, what you put out in this, in, in, this, in this internet, I can't say in this world, in this internet, it, it'll come back to you. You know what I'm saying? So, I, yeah, I, I agree with you on that. You know what I'm saying? So, 
Don't be talking greasy if you can't handle yourself, you know? You got to be very mindful of what, yes. you're, what you're talking about. Yes. You might slip on something, you might forget, but there's people out there that don't forget and they're going to bring it up. The people are watching. Even the people that are celebrities. Out there, brother. The celebrities, because you got to understand, even if it's a celebrity, a person that's a fan of that celebrity, when you're talking shit about them, will forward them that. Right. And there's a lot of them forwarding that to their, to their, their favorite artists are going to see it. So if you talk shit about somebody and you expect for them to be and come on your platform, it's not going to happen. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, so you got to, what you put out there is going to be heard. So, you know, so believe me, because podcasts are, that's what it is right now. Yes. Podcasts are taking over, they killed radio off. They killed radio. So it's like, that's what it is, bro. So and people are watching. Podcast is the new radio. Yep. Yep. We all know that. Yep. Radio's dead. Radio's dead. Radio's dead, bro. It is. And if it is radio, you're looking. You're listening to satellite radio. You know you're listening mean? to an interview. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. podcast. Big boy, how he's doing that yeah. now? Yeah, you know that's what it is. That's what it is. That's where the future's headed, man. We all see it, and and if you if you're uh, fortunate enough to get a, a piece of that, then hey, go out, uh, go right ahead. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I enjoy listening to people's stories. Oh yeah, like yours. You know, it's it's entertaining, not only for me but for the viewers. It's for traffic, bro. Yeah, when you're in traffic, you can watch a whole podcast. Right. Or listen to a whole podcast. Yeah, you can listen. Yeah, listen or watch. Yeah. Vice versa. You know? Yep. So what's new for Spanish Fly, man? What you got? What you guys Spanish got Fly, out? bro. We're working on an album right now. And um, like we, we just dropped our new, um, new single. It's out on all platforms. It's called um, Cruise Control featuring Little Rob. Dope song. The video's coming out. The video just got shot last week. Um, Concrete's already um, Concrete's editing it. My boy Concrete. Mr. Funny Man. It's going to be a dope visual. We, we performed that day with Little Rob. He brought us on. He showed us love. We rocked the stage with him. That's going to be part of the video. We, he came to the, he, we had him in Wilmas. He was all in the city, ch chilling, drinking, you know, smoking, everything. You know what I'm saying? Showing love. So, and then um, we just, our project's going to be dope, bro. My boy, um, Esa Daz, MOC, Any Means. It's, it's going to be big. I seen a video of, of, of you. Any means and a few other people, man. That cipher, right? That cipher. OG Pamps. That's when yeah. OG Pamps. Yeah, buddy. Shout when he came Pamps, onto the videos. Man, yeah. yeah, man, that was dope. OG Pamps came through, dog. From you know, he was in living in Arizona at the time. Yeah. He came, came through all the way down to, to the city and shot a video. Yeah, it awesome. Uh, it, I just, I recently watched it. And it was it was it was dope, man. I really I really enjoyed the the cipher, man. It was awesome. And there was another song where uh, it was you and. Uh, I forget the name of it, but you were you were talking about the whole nineties epidemic going on. Oh, out. you're talking about press the line. Press the line. Yeah, that's what it that was. one love to my people. Yeah, and, yeah, I like that one. Man. Yeah, that's that's a that was um I didn't want to touch on that subject because everybody was doing it. You know, the riots and the COVID and everything right. when it first started. I didn't want to touch on it because I thought it was something like, oh yeah, everybody's doing it. Why am I gonna do it? But I did. But I, I put my my end of it like from from people losing houses from. Like from, like it just, it was my touch on it. And I thought it was kind of different. I wanted to put my vibe to it and it came out pretty dope, bro. It was relatable. Yeah, it was relatable and I, I, I think a lot of people felt it, so. And you're giving love to, you know, you're showing one love to, to everything, bro. Like to the, to the women playing both roles, one love to like everybody that's going through the struggle. People losing their houses, one love. You see people, you see people living in, in trailers with their BMW right next to the side of it because they lost their house. Like, it was a lot going on, bro. You know what I'm saying? Uh, businesses, their APR is getting so high that are, are just, they didn't get funding quick. Like they didn't get saved by the government, so they lost everything. It was a lot going on at the yeah. time. All these, all these, um, all these um, people just lost a lot that when that came, when COVID hit, and shut everything down. Gyms, everything, everything was shut down completely. It was crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. If there's anybody that you would want to collaborate with, who would it be? Now? Right I think now. it would be, um, I would say, um, I would say, I would say Sugar Free. I think Sugar Free is still dope. I think he, um, and I would say, uh, damn, like maybe like Nas, like Nas's flow, he's dope. Yeah. Nas and, Nas and Sugar Free. And those so would, are you, would you say that East Coast uh, influenced you as well? Is I would say I wasn't really a fan of that was my um, out of all the genres, like now of all the areas from 
from like the Master P like down south yeah. and to the to the to like the two shores and and from the the bay area they were my least but I did I, I still had like I had a I had like a folder of CDs bro I had like a the I had an east coast CD a west coast CD All right my west coast CD was like that like my stack of CDs were like that my east coast was small but my down south was kind of big cuz I was a Master P fan and then I had my um then I had my um up up north you know like the two short and Spice One and um, Bay Area. Yeah. The Click, all them, you know what I'm saying? It was dope, E40. But yeah, so I wasn't really, that was the least of, of, of um, area of the East Coast. But I, you know, you have your Jay Z, B, I, you know, Biggie, and everybody in Mob Deep. They were all dope. They're huge, yeah. You have your Wu Tang Clan, because that's where, that's where you base it off. Like our, the group, the Spanish Fly group now, is like a Wu Tang Clan, like a Latino Wu Tang Clan, because everybody's doing their projects. Yeah. But when they come together and they put an album out, it's amazing. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a whole different, like, everybody has their own style. When you can hear it in, in people's music, like solo projects, like I have a solo project. My boy Mox is going to drop a solo project, real hip hop. And then any means is dropping this solo project is real lit, like, like um, newer age hip hop. And then when we do an album together, it's like all those things blending into one. It's amazing. It comes out dope. So it's going to be big. The Spanish Flower album's going to be big. Yeah. Gonna get a lot of love. It's gonna shine, brother. For sure. And we, like we said too, ain't no ain't no other group can mess with us, bro. At all. We challenge any group to mess with Spanish Fly. Ooh, there you go. Any group they want it. We can go on a live performance. We can go on a live freestyle or whatever, dog. We we challenge them. So if they want it, they can get it. They can get it, bro. They Damn. can get it. Because no group can can fade us, bro. That sounds that sound like a challenge to me, man. I've been challenging fools for like since like for years, bro. <laughs> There's not that many groups, so, but I, but I think any, I, they can't fade us on any group. That's Show them up. up, man. Yeah. If there's any message you can give to the uh, aspiring artist who wants to follow that path and, and, and so much competition out there going on right now, what kind of message would you give them? Stay independent. Find a good backing. Um, don't, um, I would say, um, don't get too excited when you're signing a um, contract look it over, pay that extra fee to get it overlooked. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's expensive to get a lawyer to check it, but it's worth it in the long run. You know what I'm saying? It's like, a, uh, it's like when you get married and you have so much, you have billions of dollars, you wanna get a, 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 an agreement with the, the, what is it, like a prenup? Oh uh, uh, yeah, pre yeah. Pre prenup? A prenup, you get a prenup, right? Yeah. So you get a prenup, it's the same thing, you gotta be on it. Yeah. Because you don't know what you're signing into. You're gonna make mistakes but learn from your mistakes. Don't make it twice or three or four times. Learn that um, from your mistakes and just learn the game, bro. Like, cause I, I haven't even mastered the game. I'm just getting back into the game. Like I, I've been doing it for a, a couple years. I took a long break, but I'm just saying, but I learned from my mistakes. You gotta have a business mind state. You know what I'm saying? And if you're gonna do it, step in strong, bro. And, and, and um, know, your, know your talent. If you know you have it or, or if you have a, a good following, just, just give your all to it. But just know what you're getting yourself into. Understand things. If you don't understand it, get somebody to show you how to understand it. That's what. I, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. So how I look at it. Oh, Johnny D, thanks you. Thank you for being here, man. Appreciate your your intellect and your your story, man. Very interesting. Thank you, brother. Uh, wish you nothing but the best of luck on your future endeavors and everything else, man. Uh, Spanish fly in the building. That's what we do it. Coming soon, Spanish Fly, man. Uh, Cruise Control coming out soon. The video shot by Concrete. It's going to be dope. More visuals coming. It's going to be dope. Check out that new song I have with Lottie the G. You know what I'm saying? Real OG. It's out there right now on all, all platforms. The video's out. Shot by OG Pamps. And um, a, lot, a lot of stuff coming, man. A lot of features. Trying to keep it popping, bro. You know, I'm, I'm showing love to every artist. If you, wanna, if you want a feature, hit me up. We'll go from there. I ain't going to overcharge you. Just pay for the studio time. <laughs> Give me some gas money and we're good to go, dog. You know there what I'm saying? There it is. There it is. Hell yeah. Let's roll. Johnny D in the building. Thanks again, man, for pulling up, man. No problem. Until next time, man. Thank you. No problem.